It seems like a lot of people come in with a budget of around $2,000. If that's you, this episode is for you. We're gonna look at a bunch of different options at that price point from different system integrators. All that and more in this episode of SI Weekly. Let's go, nerds! Hello everyone, I'm Brea Thorne. Welcome to SI Weekly. And uh, I gotta say, I hope you enjoyed our little uh, April Fool's episode yesterday. Uh, I, th I guess it's our first time doing that. Biggest joke of all time, actually. Anyway, so what we're doing in this episode is based around the information that I have right over here. This is some of the information I've gathered from the PC matchmaker streams that I do when people submit the forms to let me know what their budgets are, what use cases they're going to have for their PC, things like that. And it seems like a really big chunk of people are in this area here where it's, I mean, $1,500 is a big one as well, and we'll cover that in a separate episode. But around $2,000 is its whole, I mean, it's an equal amount of people. It's a lot of people. So I will say, if you're interested in coming in and getting a one-on-one -on -one recommendation for your own budget and needs, and these episodes aren't quite enough to get you where you need to be knowledge-wise, then um, come on by the stream every Tuesday and Thursday. I have started streaming on Sundays, but those are gaming streams, not really PC related. We just get to hang out play some games. I've been doing like I, I did a speed run of Metroid Dread last Sunday. And then um, tonight, because I'm recording on Sunday, I'm going to be doing a randomizer, probably a link to the past or Super Metroid, something like that. Just some fun gaming stuff. OK, let's get into looking at these PC options that you have at the two thousand dollar price point. Right after I let you know, this video is sponsored by VIP CDK deals. The best place to go when you want to get yourself an OEM Windows license to get rid of that annoying watermark and unlock all the customization Windows has to offer. So instead of paying well over $100 for a retail version of Windows, you can get an OEM key for a fraction of the price. Plus, you can use my code BRAY25 to get a nice fat discount off of the already discounted price. Keep in mind that this is an OEM key that gets attached to this system and cannot be used with another one or if you change your hardware. Make sure you get the right key for your operating system. For more information on how to use CDK deals, click the link in the description saying here's how it works and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Thank you CDK deals for continuing to support the channel. Now before we get into the options, the all important disclaimers. First off, this video is being filmed for April 2nd, 2024. Any pricing and availability that you see in this video, if you watch it much later, will probably have changed. And that's very normal in this industry, don't let that throw you off. Uh, you can at least get some ideas of what might fit your needs down the road or whatever. Uh, the second disclaimer is that you're also going to hear some opinions and uh, they are my opinions. You're going to hear some hyperbole, maybe some humor, stuff like that. Um, that's all my own. That's all me. OK, if you disagree with my opinions, that's totally awesome and totally fine. I want to hear that, like share those dissenting opinions politely, if you don't mind, in the comments below. If you disagree with my Humor, I mean, I mean, I kind of get that, but maybe don't let me know about that one. The next one is very important as well. This is not financial advice. I am not here telling you buy this thing because it's right for you. I can't be entirely sure what is exactly right for you as an individual because these videos are meant to help as many people as possible. We're looking at info here. We're going over it. And I'm hoping that you become familiar with these things so that you can make an informed and confident decision for yourself. The last thing is, if you are on the fence about going DIY or pre-built, I understand that feeling. And there's a lot of people that come into the community with that same kind of conundrum. If you know you want to pre-built, you're not interested in DIY, no problem. This is the channel for you, kind of the only channel for you. I'm kind of the only channel that focuses on pre-builds. But if you're thinking about DIY, I urge you to strongly consider it because it can save you money. There is no doubt about that. You're not paying build fees. You're not paying a company to warranty your system, to test your system, to do all those things for you. And um, that company needs to keep the roof over their heads and pay their employees, pay their employees paychecks and insurance taxes. They got to pay the bills there. All of that stuff. OK, of course, it costs more to get a pre-built. So if you're thinking about DIY, strongly consider it. If you really just want a pre-built, keep watching. Now, one note to you guys here, okay? A question you need to ask yourself before we get into this. I know, I'm sorry. 
Actual content starts at timestamp. I got it, okay? But you need to hear this. I'm serious. Listen up. This is very important. If you are interested in at some point upgrading your CPU in this system you're investing in, meaning you got your system for two or three years and your games are getting harder to run and like maybe, you know, you didn't get the highest end CPU because you don't need to because like gaming is more GPU, right? Yeah, well, if you want to have that upgrade ability to get multi-generational uplifts in performance by skipping the next gen CPU, getting the one after that, that's right now, you would need to go AMD to do that because Intel is getting to the end of the line for their current LGA 1700 socket. Once their next generation CPUs comes out, if you want that next gen CPU, you need the next gen motherboard and socket and chipset, all that. AMD, however, they're in their stride right now with socket AM5. That socket will accept CPUs for the next few years that AMD comes out with. So if that's something you're interested in, you should definitely consider it. Besides which at this price point, if you're gaming and you're doing getting a $2,000 system, those systems should be aimed squarely at 1440p, no less, okay? Unless you're looking at esports, pro gaming, and then yeah, you need Lots of CPU, less GPU, that would change the balance out. But we're looking at more of a standard, broader kind of gaming concept here where it's gonna be 1440p, which is fewer frames per second, meaning you don't need as much CPU, it's not gonna be stressed as much, okay? So what you could do is get yourself something like a lower end CPU in, in the AMD side, and then next generation ones are gonna be announced in a couple of months at Computex. Let those come out, give them a year or two, or longer grab one of those when they're heavily discounted you're going to get a big boost in cpu performance cool hey you're not going to be able to do that if you buy an intel system right now if you don't care about that cool tons of people buy their system and leave it as it is other than maybe adding storage or whatever right tons of people do that and then when it's too slow they get another one and then they donate they like they pass that one on the one the previous system on to their like little brother or whatever little sister or like the grandma, because she wants to get into playing COD or whatever, you know, I don't know. I don't know your life. Yeah, so keep that in mind going forward, that it's okay to not want to upgrade your CPU. And if you don't want to, either Intel or AMD will be a great choice. Though AMD is kind of winning in gaming right now. Intel's kind of winning in multi-purpose systems. There you go, a little quick little note for you. So the first ones that we're gonna be looking at and kind of we're, we're gonna see what's going on here in the iBuyPower Ready systems to sort of look at the high volume seller that is iBuyPower and see what they have around this range. And there's a lot here, okay? So you're gonna see systems from 1899 up to 2149 and there is a wide range of systems here with very seemingly very high specs. Now there's a way that they achieve this. First off is volume, okay? They can make less per PC because they sell more of them. Now they put a lot of care into the builds that they do, but they can't put as much care as like a boutique builder. Uh, I've been in their facility. Jay's Two Cents just recently toured their facility and it's very impressive there, but they do crank out a ton of PCs there, but they're, they are good at what they do. They also though, don't necessarily put as much of the price of as much of the, the money into stuff like the motherboard, the power supply, things like that, the RAM, all that kind of stuff. OK, if you're seeing something on here and you're like, oh, that, that's terrible or oh, that's awesome. That is subjective to you. There are going to be some people who prefer the boutique builds, even if it doesn't come with that high as high of a tier of GPU, if instead of 4070 Ti Super, it gets a 4070 Super or whatever. They want the build quality, they want the warranty, they want the, the care put into each build because they can take their time because they sell a lower volume of systems per month, per year, and not by a little bit, by a lot. Keep in mind that if a build on the screen doesn't make sense for you, it does make sense for somebody out there. Let's start here with the Ready North 003 right here. So this one is a 14700 KF an ASUS Z790 Wi-Fi motherboard, 4070 Super, DDR5 6000, a two terabyte M.2 NVMe Gen 4 drive, okay, and um, a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler in the Fractal North case, which I think is really nice looking. 
And there's a version that is an AMD version right here. Very similar. And there's I don't know, every time, every time I can't help but feel like I buy power gets this backwards every time because between the two, between Intel's processors and AMD Ryzen processors, the ones that are more sensitive to RAM speed are the Ryzen processors. But they every time I see an AMD system, it's going to have DDR5 5600 and the Intel systems get DDR5 6000, which is the sweet spot for AMD, not Intel. I don't get it. I don't get why that's the case. However, I didn't get it. But I was told, I asked about this, and I was told that in their lab, in their testing, if it's B650, it can be a little less stable with DDR5-6000. And it sort of clicked into place. I was like, okay, that makes sense. But then I was like, why does this one with an X670 have DDR5-5600? Hmm? Fairly certain it's a cost-saving measure, but I don't know why it doesn't apply to Intel. No idea. Don't understand why. Still, both of these fairly nice systems. Absolutely, 4070 Super is an, is an awesome GPU and uh, 1440p gaming all day long. It's a nice step up over the 4070's performance, depending on the game, 15 to 20% uh, increase in frame rates, things like that, really, really nice. So looking at that, you, we can continue to go a little bit up. This system has a Ryzen 9 7900X and a 4070 Ti Super, okay? So it's actually $100 more for this one. And you go from a 4070 Super to a 4070 Ti Super. It's kind of a crazy disparity in performance, but also you're losing that 7800X 3D and going to a 7900X. So that's not as gonna be, it's not as good of a CPU for gaming. The 7900X can game, oh, it can game all day long, but it's not that top tier gaming CPU, you know? Um, all of these, I am so, so happy to say, have two terabyte M.2 drives, and they're all PCIe Gen 4, except for this one here, this Ready Monochrome just says two terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, it says Gen 3. But other than that one, all the rest of these are gonna say Gen 4 on them. Uh, well, this one doesn't, wow. I can't actually say stuff like that, I suppose. Never mind. So some of these will be a little bit slower, but the the capacity is super nice because games are getting bigger and bigger and they're not going to stop doing that. They're going to instead continue doing that. The sad thing is, if you're interested in anything beyond gaming, they can do it. Yes. However, there are caveats to some of these. First off, any Intel system that you're going to see, especially, I mean, particularly in this price range, is going to have this, this little letter F that bothers me oh so much. So say you wanted to do some gaming and also, you know what, you're trying to get into video editing. Well, guess what? This does not have the iGPU. That's what the F means in an Intel processor. And to my mind, once you're getting up to about $2,000, the $25 or so retail price difference between a 14900K and 14900KF 14700K, 14700KF, it's 25 to 30 bucks difference at retail. And I feel like at this price point, you should get more for your money. Plus, if you're gonna have a system that cannot be customized, it should fit more use cases, not fewer. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, the core count in these 14th gen processors, the, the Intel uh, hybrid architecture is fantastic for a multi-purpose system. You look at something right here, like this uh, 7800X 3D system. The 7800X 3D is purpose built for gaming. It does not do, it falls behind in pretty much all other use cases. Uh, like a 7700X is gonna outperform a 7800X 3D when it comes to stuff like content creation, um, code, compiling code, just doing things that are very CPU intensive, multi-core and all this stuff that requires high frequency because it has lower frequencies, but more cash. Games love that. Most other applications don't really care. Uh, but something like the 7900X, great for gaming and content creation and photo editing and graphic design and whatever you wanna do. Now, one thing is if you're looking at these ones that are 1999, 
I've got a code for you. It is Breathorn. That code will, it's just my name. It's, it's like this, it's right here. It's spelled right there. Just spell it just like that. So any system that is up to from from $1,000 to $19.99, you get 50 bucks off by putting that code in there. Go do that if you're gonna do that, cool. Um, it saves you money, it supports the channel, it's awesome. One thing though, if you pop up to these systems right here and it, it's now $2,099, once it becomes $2,000 or more, that same code gets you $100 off. Ah, that means that this system would be 1949 and this system would be 1999. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Stuff to think about right there. We, we should be mentioning warranties during this, okay? One year parts, three years labor, warranty. Okay, that's what you get with iBuyPower. There you go. Cool, cool. So there's some deals from them. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from there to some more boutique builders where you're gonna get more attention on your build. You're gonna have one builder from start to finish. So the next one we're gonna be looking at is actually over here at Power GPU. This is the Power Prime. And this system fits right into our budget of $2,000 at $19.99. I say budget of $2,000, we're gonna go a little over, we're gonna go a little under, things like that, okay? And this one does go under because with code Brayathorn you get 50 bucks off, that makes this $19.49. Now, what do you get for that? This system comes with an Intel Core i5-14600K. What's missing here? What do we not see that we saw all over the place that I buy power? F. Ain't no F on that. This is a much more versatile system, in my opinion. I am just happy to see that. I don't look at iBuyPower and PowerGPU and say, that's the same kind of customer looking for both, right? But you should be considering this because PowerGPU has an amazing reputation for their build quality, for the way that they take care of their customers, all of those things. And that is something I'm focusing on with the rest of these SIs that we're looking at now. Now, to be clear, iBuyPower is a I mean, they, they have a they have a very strong reputation now for customer service tech support. I mean, they they've done a bang up job of that. OK, you can actually see that in the SI testimonials channel for iBuyPower power in our discord, which is linked in the description. What we're looking at here is the Cougar Duo Face RGB mid tower case in black. And I've seen this case. I do like it. It is quite nice. Now, this is using a deep cool LS 520 liquid CPU cooler. I do genuinely like deep cool coolers uh they are performant they last a long time i've actually been told this specifically by jesse he vouched for deep cool 100 percent they're using an msi b760 gaming plus wi-fi ddr5 motherboard this is not an this is not a bargain bin motherboard by any means this is a step up on the motherboard but not in terms of like io this is still a gaming focused system okay Though it is versatile and it does have a full ATX motherboard, so you have the PCI expansion slots where you can put in like a PCI add-in card for USB, get more output, things like that for streaming, all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, so this has six USB type A ports. It's a little short on IO in my opinion. It also has a type C port. The reason I say it's a little short on IO is because yes, it has six, and but also four of those are USB 2.0, so pretty slow. There's only two fast USB type A ports and then one type C. But aside from that, and the fact you can expand on that too, aside from that, you get 2.5 gig ethernet, um, you get Wi-Fi included as well, should be Wi-Fi 6E if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. Now also, they're not cutting corners on the storage. This thing has a Kingston KC3000 or SKC3000D, 3000, 2 terabyte Gen 4 M.2 drive. This is a fast, long lasting, reliable drive, and it's a great capacity. Now, this is named a little differently than I'm used to. I'm used to just seeing it being called the KC3000. Here it's called the SKC3000D. So just to verify that this is the drive that I'm thinking about, I went over to uh, the build help section of Zach's Tech Turf. It's a great website, Zach's a great dude. Uh, also sells pre-builds and we covered those in uh, uh, um, quite a few episodes back and we might need to go back and take another look because I think they're gonna be making some changes over here. Uh, however, there is this, the build help guide, which has like the PSU tier list, the PSU cultist tier list, direct linked right there. Um, GPU comparison charts, SSD list, just great stuff. I went in here, sorted by brand, that is a Kingston drive. And yeah, I don't see an SKC 3000, actually, interestingly. 
uh, but that could be like a full skew, whereas the common skew is KC3000. The specs on this thing are awesome. 7,000 megabyte per second re sequential read, 7,000 megabyte per second sequential write. It is considered a high-end NVMe by Zach over at Zach's Tech Tour, so that's very good sign right there. And it is not DRAMless. This does have integrated DRAM, which I generally prefer, and that's what kind of sets it apart as a high-end drive. So what we have here for the power supply is a 750 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular ATX 3.0 power supply. That means it has a native connector for 40 series cards, that 12 volt high power connector. No adapter needed here. And Be Quiet tends to get really high ratings on their power supplies on that PSU Cultist tier list that I so wholly recommend when you're comparing power supplies. GPU here, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Super. It's gonna be an ASUS card or an MSI card that is specified right there. Also, the memory here, excellent choice with Kingston Fury Beast. Kingston has just been on a roll with making really reliable and uh, consistent, stable parts with when it comes to RAM and storage. But I can tell you this right here will suit pretty much anybody's needs. Most people are looking for 1440p gaming, believe it or not. If we take a look at that same list that I had up earlier, I ask what resolution most people are going to be looking for. And yes, nearly half are planning on going 1440p. Yeah, lots of people, 1440p, this thing will rock that. So, and also you're going to get this really fast because they keep these things ready to go. So if you do get the, one of these systems, just like over at Power, same thing here. Put in my name, code Brayathorn. The goal, by the way, guys, if you're not if you're not aware of this already, there's kind of a, there's a thing going on that we've been doing for a while now called Operation Code Brayathorn. It doesn't favor any one system integrator over the other. We want you to have the ability to go to any of the SIs that have built up trust with our community, type my name in, and get a discount. Whatever the holiday is, whatever sale they're flashing when you get to the site doesn't matter you can go in you can type brayathorn you know you're going to get a discount some have unique not brayathorn codes and those are listed in the coupon code section of our discord community again linked in the description below the next one we're going to be looking at is paradox customs now what i did here at paradox customs is uh it, the funny thing is paradox customs has a sort of air about them of just like they generate hype they work with celebrities, they work with personalities and influencers, and they bring the PCs. You might not think going by that, like by that display, right? That sort of hype, that vibe, that you could get a really good system at an affordable price here. So we're gonna go to the custom builder and let's check it out. So in the custom builder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the system that is closest to our budget at $2,000. Not over it, because then you have to like downspec it. We're gonna go just under it. And we're going to use this NZXT H5 flow system that starts at 1807. So we have selected the NZXT H5 flow builder, and this comes with a fantastic default spec, though there are some changes I would make. I feel like in this case that a little bit more was put into the CPU than need be, and not enough was put into the GPU. It's coming in at 1807, so obviously we have room for improvements without downgrading anything, but I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. I'm gonna take this Ryzen 7 7700 and push it down to a 7600 or 7600X. It's only a $30 difference between the two, but the 7600 will get a lot of the performance that the 7600X would get. So I'll let you choose which one you want. But for this one, I'm gonna choose the 7600 with the idea that it is very upgradable, can totally be upgraded when the next gen of CPUs comes out or the one after that. And this will handle 1440p gaming with aplomb. That means it'll do it with ease. Now that busted the price down to 1717. Where can that money go? Well, it's gaming PC. Should go into the GPU. Hey, by the way, if you want to just carry your current GPU forward where you're just trying to get a new platform, new system, you can buy the system with no GPU. Now, if we go with the 4070 Super, that we review our selections is going to put us at 1992. That is fantastic. But let's look at the other things here. What have we got for RAM? DDR5 6000 CL36. I personally would have preferred to see the Trident Z5 Neo 
automatically come in whenever we chose a Ryzen CPU because the Trident Z5 Neo is the Expo version of the Z5 memory from G-Skill. Expo is the memory profile like Intel has XMP, AMD has Expo. And that just will reassure you that you're getting RAM that has a profile best suited to Zen 4, best suited to AMD. We also have a two terabyte drive by default. There's still a little room in the budget. You could push this up to the, uh, the Mushkin Vortex Redline. And that one, 7,400 megabyte per second sequential read speeds, has onboard DRAM, all of that stuff for $10 more. I honestly, I just, I RPIT just, maybe just like, maybe just, maybe just take that stuff out if it's just $10 difference, man. Just make them all high performance. I would approve. Someone will want them and they're great. They are good drives, you know? You know what? Send them to me. I've been wanting to try and do like a um, an NVMe or like an M.2 NVMe NAS drive. That would be so sick. I'll just take care of those. You just send them right over to me, all right? Okay, we're gonna go and review selections. Now I'm just making these changes. You hit review selections and it brings you back. Now we have a really fast drive with DRAM included. We're at $2,002 at our total down here and we're looking good so with all of that this is a sick system rog strix b650-a for the motherboard and that's it for the system right there it is two thousand and two dollars and if you want to upgrade the cpu you can it's as simple as that you do that you hit select and review selections you just upgraded your cpu but it makes it 2237 but now you have 7800 x3d Okay, or you can go for the 7700 that was chosen before and you'll go from a six core CPU to an eight core CPU. Sky's the limit. This is your system. You do what you want with it. Just put code Brayathorn in there at the end and it will discount your system. One thing though, if you do choose to go with a 7800X3D, this cooler is not gonna do it. You would also need to upgrade the cooler. Okay, so keep that in mind. But yeah, Paradox coming in with competitive pricing and from what has been reported back to me from customers of Paradox, great build quality, all that stuff. And also, if you're trying to save a bit and you don't care about ray tracing, scooch on over to the 7800 XT right here and save yourself 150 bucks because this thing for 1440p gaming is, is awesome. Okay, now the next one we're gonna look at is the Centurion. And that, for those who have been with the channel for a long time and watching us, this is a very familiar system to you. The Centurion has been a, a, a real contender over at Alexander PCs for quite a long time. Alexander PCs has had a lot of reviews come in in the SI testimonials and they're all positive. It's crazy. They have the most out of anyone, if I recall correctly, and they're all positive. It is bonkers. Now, one thing that they've added, which I love to see, is that you can choose between an Intel or AMD platform. Before, most of these were Intel. And then you can choose your GPU. It starts though with what GPU did I just mention? The 7800 XT. You wanna go with the 4070 Super? You can. It brings the price up to 2178, but, and that's the white system. If you go with the black system, it is a $20 difference. And the AMD one comes with a Ryzen 7 7700 X, okay? Intel comes the Core i5-14600K. Oh, hey, what's missing there? Again, I buy power. The F is not there for this $2,000 system. Doesn't that just make sense? There's the same kind of care when it comes to the parts chosen that you would find at boutique builders. And it is just, it, it, they're, they're very picky. So this one, comparatively to the others, is a little behind on the storage where it has KC3000, but it's a one terabyte. However, with Alexander PCs, you have the option at checkout to add storage, even though this is a pre-configured system. So that adds a lot of ease to the, to, the, to the process. If you know you have a huge Steam library and for some reason you like to have them all installed at once and you just need a dedicated two terabyte drive for that, you can get that at checkout. They'll build it in there for you and you're good to go. Uh, Landcool 215, still one of my favorite cases. I was so sad when, they, when, when on the Landcool 216, they took out the 200 millimeter RGB fans because those fans were nuts. They moved, they moved a good amount of air and it was so quiet. Motherboard choices are good. Asus Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi for Intel and for AMD, MSI, MAG, B650, Tomahawk, 
Wi-Fi. Okay. And um, yeah, just good choices all around. But anyway, coming in with the 7800 XT using code THORN, which as you can see is the second half of my name here. Coming in with code THORN, you get 50 bucks off, which brings it below $2,000. And shipping is included. And also, cable extensions in the color of your choice are included. And also, lifetime warranty is included. And I've seen them go to great lengths to back up that lifetime warranty. We get a lot of feedback, guys. A lot of feedback. So hard to go wrong here, if I'm being honest. Now we're going to move on to a system integrator that I think most people are sleeping on, and that is a damn shame. Okay, because this team is so good. Their PCs are so good. And just the experience that they provide is so good. Now, to be fair, several other SIs that we've talked about also provide this but none of them have it as a core of what they do like phoenix pc where they stream every build that they do okay so phoenix pcs their the core of their methodology is to build every system they sell on stream there's a lot to that i mean the main thing is the transparency that you get you see the builds being done and then beyond that the experience the customer gets to have right the, the you, you get to bond with the person building your pc which is sick that's so cool and you get to see the process happen so i want to show you guys real quick before we get into this one system they have systems starting at 999 and they don't say starting at and then it's junk like it's not something you would actually want to game on that is already a capable 1080p gaming machine and then it only goes up from there and they go all the way up to systems that are starting at 2719 and you can customize it to your heart's content to be even higher end. But the one we're looking at is the Griffin. And as you can see, it starts at 1929. Now there is a sale going on right now where they are slashing prices for up to $100 off. So you'll see that the sale discounts are already applied. It's right there. This one is down from 1929 to 1879. And that stacks with the discount that you get when you type this little name right here into the coupon code field at checkout. Okay, so they really do walk you through this process, but there are default specs and they're right here, okay? This system's already able to do 1440p gaming out of the gate, comes with a 4070. Now they're probably gonna be updating this to a 4070 Super, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know that they're gonna be upgrade, updating the uh, the cooler to be, I believe they're going with deep cool instead of the Vetrus. So that's gonna be different. They just haven't changed it on the site just yet. They told me that earlier. Uh, but it comes in the H7 flow, a very high airflow, very nice quality case. And GXT has been killing it in the case game lately. And it, this defaults with the 12700KF. That's going to be changed as well. The default one's going to be changed as well. But the thing is, we get to choose what we want as we go. So let's go with the white system here. And it shows you a little arrow right there. Bam. You can click this to, to get the pre-configured option. But right now, I wouldn't do that because they haven't updated that yet. Okay, choose your Windows. Now we can choose Intel or AMD. And your choices of the AMD uh, are 7700X or 7800X 3D. Great at this price point. Both of those are great choices. Okay. And with Intel, all the way from the 12700KF all the way up to the 14900K. We're going to go AMD, Ryzen 7, 7700X. We're going to pick our motherboard. And I'm going to go with the basic one here, the Prime X670-P. They do have the tough X670E+. Plus, so that is an upgrade on the motherboard. And with the Prime, it goes to 1999. With the X670E Plus, it goes up to 2094. So it is like a $95 price difference. But we're approaching this as more of a gaming PC rather than all purpose. That's why we're going with 32 gigs of DDR5 6000. There is an option for 5200. I would recommend DDR5 6000 CL30 just because it is going to be better for AMD. And then we can default to the 4070. And if we go to the 4070 Super, I think 4070s are probably being discounted here for them because it shouldn't be a whole lot more for a 4070 Super. They're supposed to be same MSRP, but there are discounts going out on 4070s. So if we wanted to be really be keeping up with all the other systems that we looked at, we do need to go with the 4070 Super. But remember, my discount code does stack on top of their already marked down price. Uh, choose the one terabyte drive, or you can choose the two terabyte drive. One terabyte drive is basically not going to change the price much, then it's going to be more if you do the two terabytes. So 
2184 is what we're at. You can choose a secondary and tertiary drive. I just appreciate the fact that they have it there three times because I get to say tertiary. But you do have to select, if you don't want them, you have to select no extra drive to move on. 850 watt, 80 plus gold, totally fine for this build. And um, no extra fans, or you can go with one rear RGB fan or the premium option of getting all Ma uh, Cooler Master Master Fan Halo MF120 fans, replacing the ones that come with the AIO, the case fans, all of that. But we're going no extra fans to make the total for this 2184. And this is a heckin capable system right here with tons of future upgradability. We don't say future proofing here, not in this house, not in this household. That term bears no meaning to me because there's no such, no such thing as future proof. We could be doing quantum computing in two years. Who knows if there's going to be a breakthrough? No such thing as future proof. All right. It's a sore spot for me, but we're prepared. There you go. That's another great option right around the $2,000 price point, And it is even further discounted with code Brayathorn. Let's actually see what that comes out to. Oh, $37.59. There you go. That brought the price down to $21.47. My head is blocking it and I can't do anything there. There we go. $21.47 after discount. There you go. It's not a huge discount. I know, but every little bit helps. It's free real estate. I got to tell y'all about something and I'm going to show you this. You have to see this. This is crazy. Okay, I'm going to look this up, but I saw Paul's tech news on uh, Paul's hardware and um, I need to show you this clip that I saw in there. It is. It's about to be weird to have the name that I have. So I'm going to go directly to the comment that I put on this video. All right. The comment I put, this is just a little funny aside here, okay? I put the timestamp six minutes, nine seconds. Oh man, a lot of people misspell my name, but really AMD? Come on. Let's see what happened at that time. The new epic Braythorn skews. What? What? Are you, are you kidding me? We were so close. We were so freaking close to getting free Epic CPUs. Cause AMD, you'd have to. I'm being very rude and totally brought blocking Paul right now. Paul, I'm sorry, here, here, there you go. There's Paul. You can't make this kind of stuff up. Anyway, guys, I hope those of you who are around this budget felt like there were some really good options for you here. And of course, that's not all of them. If you're not happy with the ones you saw and you want to get one-on-one -on -one help, you can come by the stream every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and on twitch.tv slash Brayathorn, okay? And get on the list. When you come in, don't just start saying blah, 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 what's good? Is this good? I want this. No, no, no. There's a form you can fill out to get actual good help. I don't just take one question, ask for zero context, and just guess what might be good for you. I actually care about making a solid recommend recommendation for you as an individual. So that means you have to provide me with information. Sorry, nothing personal. It is going to be your budget, what you're going to use the system for overall, right? Gaming, content creation, graphic design, photo editing, the coding, game design, whatever. Are you a fan of pirate hardware? You want to get into designing games? I'm a fan too, but I don't have time to, to make games. You should though. Anyway, what's up Thor? You're amazing. Thank you for having more than enough hair for the both of us. Okay. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed the joke episode yesterday. I know I enjoyed making it, but that's going to be it for this one. And until the next one, take care.